So I've already went over this Edgelet diffuser from Muzada in a previous video and honestly it's probably been one of my favorite products I've ever tested. Now it's currently being marketed as an RGB baseboard trim solution but after playing around with it the applications for this ridiculously thin design are practically endless. But before getting into it I did want to thank Muzada. They by far have the best selection as well as what I feel the best looking diffuser channels on Amazon right now. But above and beyond diffuser channels they also specialize in deck railing so make sure to keep them in mind down the road for your next project. Now the one thing they could improve on is their reach. Currently their diffuser channels are not available in all major markets, but hopefully down the road they'll be able to expand because I have a feeling their products would do very well. So the first thing you need to do is think of something that you really like. It might be a brand, a logo, something from a movie or video game, a sports team, or a million other things. And once you have something in mind, it's time to find the perfect image. For this, I recommend you run a search for what you thought of in Google or Etsy, but make sure to put an SVG at the end. Now let's say I wanted to do something PlayStation related. I would type in PlayStation SVG and see what comes up. Chances are, no matter what you're searching for, there's probably going to be a lot of different options for you to consider. You can also do this on Google and try finding the free files, but it's not as easy, so I've generally just paid the couple dollars and went the Etsy route. Now about a year ago I bought the Cricut Maker for a few projects and it's been one of the best purchases I've ever made since there are so many ways you can use it with LEDs and diffusers, this being one of them. But if you don't have one of these or don't know anyone that does, a little later on I'll go over what you can do instead to inexpensively achieve the same results. So once I have the files downloaded for the images I want, I'm going to open up the design software that comes with the Cricut Maker. Under Home you can select Canvas, then on the left side click Upload, then again Upload Image, and then find the SVG file you want. It'll then add the file under Recent Uploads where you can select the one you want and near the bottom right hit Add to Canvas. Once that's done, I'm going to go to the left and add a box. Uncheck the lock dimensions and put in 3.93 for the height. You'll see later why this is important. Now I'm going to move the PlayStation button logo to the front and place it over the box and try to get things as big as possible while leaving a little empty space near the top and bottom. When it looks good, click and highlight everything, go towards the bottom right and click Combine and then choose the Subtract option. So that's exactly what I did for all the images that I thought might look cool and wanted to try out like you're seeing here. Now all I have to do is fire up the machine and start cutting. Once everything's cut it's time to move on to my favorite part which is called weeding. I'll be removing the vinyl part of the image that I want the light to shine through and keeping it on where I want it dark. After everything's weeded, I'll now be using what's called transfer tape to lift the image off the paper it's currently on. This is pretty easy to do, but does require a little patience because sometimes the vinyl wants to stay put and not stick to the transfer material. Alright, so quickly going back to what if you don't have one of these machines. You do have a couple different options. First one is you can go back to Etsy and search for whatever it is you're looking for, but instead of putting SVG at the end, put Vinyl Decal. Here you're going to find people that essentially do exactly what I just did, but they're going to mail you out the final weeded image for usually anywhere between $2 and $10. But make sure to message the seller beforehand and give them the dimensions you need, and I would recommend sending them this video so they know exactly how you want the image weeded. And I've also found that most of these people are more than happy to make any image you want. So you can still go ahead and download any SVG file that you find and send it over to one of these sellers to custom make it for you. Now the other option is doing pretty much the exact same thing, but this time searching for people locally on Facebook Marketplace that do this. There's going to be a lot of people that show up, so you can just message any one of them and go over exactly what you want, and in most cases they'll have it ready for same day pickup. So getting back to the project, I'm going to take the frosted acrylic panel and lay it down and give it a quick wipe to try getting off any hair or lint. 
Next, I'm going to take my first vinyl image that's still on the transfer tape, and this is one of the most important steps. You're going to spray it generously with a mixture of water and a drop or two of dish soap. Now you can flip it over and apply the image to the acrylic panel. The mixture of water and soap will allow you to move it around to make sure things are perfectly lined up, and this is where the 3.93 inches I set for the height comes into play because it's the exact same size as the acrylic. You might want to double check yours, but these are all machine cut, so I'd imagine they're all pretty much the same. Once you're happy with how it looks, go ahead and use something to squeegee out the water as best you can. Now even though it's still a little wet, you can remove the transfer tape, carefully pat dry, and you're done. And finally, I'll be doing the same thing with all the other cutouts. So you may be saying to yourself, that's a very random collection of images, and you're absolutely right. I'm going to now cut these down to create individual sizes to fit each cutout. Now I do recommend wrapping the acrylic with some painter's tape to help avoid chipping, and when you slide it into the aluminum profile, I would tape things down again so that everything is secure. I was a little nervous because I had no idea how this would turn out, but I'm happy to report that these cut flawlessly using my miter saw. The cuts were super clean and there was no visible chip out of the acrylic or tearing of the vinyl from the saw. Now moving on to how to get these lit up, I'll be using some WS2812B strips that have 100 LEDs per meter, and I've already attached my own 18 gauge silicone wires to the beginning. I won't go over that process since I already made a soldering tutorial video you can watch that goes over in great detail with close up footage of how to do this and a few other basic techniques showing you just how easy soldering is. What I'm doing here is just cutting off the extra pixels that I don't need. And what I found works best on these short pieces is to take the sticky tape off the back and then slide them into the channel like I'm doing here. And once it's in place, you can take something that will fit inside the groove to gently press down to secure them to the bottom of the aluminum. To control the lights, I'll be using WLED installed on an ESP32 board. And I did also make a quick walkthrough tutorial of that easy process you can watch if interested. You may have also noticed that I did solder my own wires to the board, which is something else I go over in my already mentioned soldering video, so make sure to check that out. Now you can use these breadboard jumper wires like you're seeing here, but these wires are really tiny and the cables don't stay on the pins very well, so I much prefer using my own. Next, I'll be using some Wago connectors to attach the wires together, and either of these styles will work for this scenario. My red voltage wires go together, my white and black ground get connected, and finally my data, which is the green and blue cables. As for powering them, I'll show you a couple different ways. For the first option, since there aren't many LEDs, I'm just gonna use some old plugs and a micro USB cord that I had laying around. I tested this out with a 5 volt 2 amp, a 5.2 volt 1.8 amp, and a 5.2 volt 2.5 amp plug, and they all seem to work just fine. I'm gonna quickly plug things in to make sure everything's working. Now let's say you had one of these cheap power units laying around that you wanted to use. The first way you can do it is use a barrel plug adapter and put in your red voltage and black negative wires. Next, use a 3-slot Wago connector and put together the red voltage wires, and using another connector, the black negative or ground wires. Then take your ESP32 device and combine the red wire to the others, then take your white ground wire and add it to the connector that has the black wires. And finally, just connect the green and blue data lines together, plug it in, and you're good to go. For this next option, maybe you have the same type of supply unit, but you don't want to use the barrel adapter. We can go ahead and cut off the end piece, strip back the wires, and you should then find the red and black connections. Then it's as simple as doing exactly what we just did to get it fired up. And finally, maybe the design you came up with takes up the entire 4 foot section and you want to use a little bit bigger unit like this 5 volt 10 amp supply. Here I've already cut off the end piece to expose the wires and now you can just plug these in just like we did before. And hopefully this gives you a good idea of just how easy it is to swap things around using these Wago connectors and why they come in so handy for little projects like this. So that about does it for this walkthrough. Please let me know if you have any questions at all and I hope you enjoy the final pictures and videos.